So let's see if we can take a very quick look at Code Sculptor uh, for Python 3. And when you open it, it has a default program. So let's take a very quick look at this default program. It starts off with uh, four comments, four lines of comments. Comments, of course, start with a pound sign, and they are text messages that the uh, computer doesn't execute. They don't appear in the output of the program. So these are usually things that programmers write uh, at the beginning or in the middle of their code to explain their code or leave notes for themselves or others. They're understood by humans, uh, but not by the computer, so to speak. Um, as a student, what you'll be doing is put your name, uh, the date, uh, your class, and uh, the name of your program. That's uh, pretty much mandatory for what you do for the programs you write. So going down to line seven, uh, the area between line seven and line 19 is all called uh, the declaration area. This is where you declare variables, uh, do importing, and uh, define um, functions. So the very first statement on line seven is an import statement uh, that imports a library called Simple GUI. Uh, Simple GUI is a graphical user interface library, and a library is a collection or module of a whole bunch of functions. And functions, as you know, are pre-written blocks of code uh, that you can use over and over again. So importing a library gives you access to a whole bunch of functions that you wouldn't have access without importing them. Uh, moving down to line nine, it's also always a good idea to leave blank spaces here and there to make your code readable. If you don't leave blank spaces, your code looks kind of bunched up. So on line nine, we have uh, what, uh, this is a declaration statement. This is declaring a variable. If you remember, a variable is an area of memory uh, that you can store information in and you give it a name. In this case, uh, the name of this variable is message. If we were writing this program, we would choose a name for this variable. Uh, the name message uh, is descriptive and you want to choose descriptive names for your variables. What's going to be stored in this variable is the string welcome. And if you remember, a string is a string of characters or letters or numbers, um, but it's not used in math normally. Uh, it's a quote, and uh, this equal sign here is actually called in uh, Python and in programming languages, it's called an assignment operator. And in language, unlike algebra, we don't say message equals welcome, we say uh, welcome is stored in message. Uh, it's storing uh, the content or the contents of message are welcome. Welcome is stored in that place in memory. Uh, moving on down to line 11, we have a comment that explains what the next uh, function is. Uh, it's a handler for the mouse click. We're not sure what that means yet, but let's take a look at it starts out with the, what's called a keyword in Python called def. Def stands for define, and it's defining a function. That's, def is the keyword to define a function. Functions are blocks of code that are given a name, and this one has the name click. Um, click uh, ver uh, functions always are followed by parentheses, and sometimes those parentheses have what are called inside parameters. This one does not have any parameters, but the uh, declaration line or the uh, definition line for this function and for all function always ends in a colon. Notice on the next line, line 13, we have an empty space. Uh, and on the follow line following, line 14, we have an empty space, five spaces on each line. Uh, and that's because Python is a, um, a language that uses white space 
uh, it assigns meaning to white space. Everything, when there's white space like this, it means that it belongs to this block of code, uh, this function. And when it goes back to not having indentation, that means that we're on to something else. But this block of code is grouped together as signified by the white space on these two lines. If you don't use white space properly, uh, you'll get errors. Uh, the first line of our function called click is to declare a variable as global. And the variable is the one that we declared up here. And here we're saying that we want to use this um, variable all throughout our program, anywhere. That means it's global. So we're declaring that it's global here. And then we're changing the contents of message from welcome to good job because we're assigning a new value to message, which is good job. Moving on down to um, the next comment, which says that this function coming up here is the handler to draw on the canvas. And here we use the def keyword again to define a function called draw. And this function does have a parameter called canvas. And uh, the function uh, uh, definition ends right here with the colon, like, all the, like they all do. And then inside we say canvas. Here we're using this variable, canvas. And this is a variable. Uh, just so you sh to show you, even though it is the canvas, which is, let me run the program right here and show you. This area here that is welcome, this is the canvas. This area here with the title bar and the click me button is called the frame. And the frame contains the canvas. The canvas has uh, what we're going to draw and what we're going to do appears in the canvas. But canvas is a variable. So just so you could see that uh, yourself, let's say I change the word canvas to B, and down here I change the word canvas to B. So when I run my program, it still runs. I still click me, it still functions okay, and I close it. That's because we could pick any name for a variable, but it's always a great idea to use descriptive names for our variables. So message is much better, or canvas is much better. Message is the same way. If I change message to, let's say, B here, and here's message again, I change it to B. Here's message again, I change it to B. Here's message again, I change it to B. I run my program, it's still going to work because message is just a variable. We can assign it any value that you want to, but B doesn't tell us much about it. So message is a much better, more descriptive term for a variable. So let's use message and let's stick with canvas. In between canvas and draw text right here is a dot. Uh, this is called dot notation, and that's where we're drawing this canvas, and then we use dot notation to signify that we're going to get something. In this case, we're going to get this function that comes from the simple GUI library. Draw underscore text is a function that has three parameters. The parameters that it has are this one right here, which is coordinates, this one right here, which is just a number, 48, and this one right here, which is a color. So obviously, when I run that program, message, the word is the word welcome. Now, that means that 50 and 112 are a position of where that message appears. 48, I'm not sure that may be the size of the message. What if I change 48 to 80 and run the program? Yes, that is the size of it. So it's the size of the text. And if I were to, let's change this back down to, I can't even remember what it was. Let's just refresh the screen. It was 48. Let's change this 50 to um, 10. And let's change the second number to 10. Now we should have just put the beginning of the welcome in the very upper left hand corner, 10 pixels down and 10, 10 pixels over, I mean, and 10 pixels down. Let's see if that's what happened. Kind of what happens. I believe that we must be starting 
this in the left hand side somewhere. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the center. Maybe it's the center of the font. So that would mean that if we change, if our font is 48 and we change this to 24, 24 and 24, then it would appear in the left hand corner. Almost. I'm a little bit off there. At any rate, we're 24 over and 24 down, so it must be starting in the bottom corner. <clears throat> but at any rate, those are, the, those are the parameters of the draw text. And what's happening here is that when we uh, click a button, the message welcome is changed to good job. Now, all of this is in the declaration area of the program. The actual body of the program is way down here. This is the actual program. And what we have here is another variable called frame. Now, this just happens to be the frame, but it still is a variable. If I change frame everywhere to B, it would still run. If we see that it runs right here, I forgot to change all my settings back. If I were to change frame right here to, let's see, B, change frame here to B, change frame here to B, and change frame here to B, run my program, it still runs. Click me, still does its work, and I close the program. But again, B doesn't tell us much. When we have it as frame, a variable named frame, it tells me that that's what this is. It's the frame of the program. So again, the rule of thumb is name your variables very descriptively for your program. So here we have frame and we're assigning a value to frame and the value that we're assigning to frame, remember this is the assignment variable, the value, uh, value we're assigning is simple GUI, that's this library, and what we want from that library is dot, this is dot notation, we want to create the frame. And the frame, frame says home 300, 200, and that means the title of the frame and the width and the height of the frame. So it's home 300, 200. When I run it, there's home up in the top and the uh, width is 300 and the height is 200. Let's change this a little bit and make it uh, boo. And let's make it uh, long and narrow. Let's make it like 600 and 50. We probably won't even see the word welcome on this. It'll be a long, thin stick. And there it is. So that's what that controls, though. That line, frame, is assigning that uh, value to simple GUI. Okay, so I refresh my screen so we're back to our original program. Next, we have frame.addButton. Here again here, frame dot, using dot net to notation, we're adding a button, and that button has a couple of parameters. Click me, and the second parameter is actually the function that we created up here, click. And remember this function, we could have named this anything too. I could change these right now to both say B, and it would still run just fine. Um, and the title is click me. If I were to change this to click again, you'll see when we run our program, and now it says click again. Still works. We're just uh, changing one of the parameters. So that, uh, didn't expect that. So that button um, is how we add a button and give it a title, and then we have a function as one of the parameters and we can put anything in here for that click to perform for us. The last part of this is that frame dot notation again, another function called draw set handler and here we're going to call another function and that function that we're calling is draw. So let's see where is draw? Right here. I forgot where it was. And this is what is going to draw that canvas. When we run that program, that's what's making this. Welcome. And lastly, 
Last but not least, we're starting our whole program by using frame.start. And start again is a function um, that comes, I believe, from Simple GUI, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, written in Python. I'm not sure where it, where it is, but that's how, that's the explanation for all the code. This is the default code. And now, as you go on and read the rest of the lesson, I'm going to ask you to do some things with this default uh, code, and we're going to use it as a starting point for our animation project. Thank you.